So here we are at Broomfield Derby College and today we're going to be looking at the oak trees and how to identify oak trees and it's one of the biggest symbols really regarding plants in the UK. The National Trust have the oak leaf as their national emblem. Uh, the oak has been used to make great ships that we've had in our country and crook barns and cathedrals as well and it's been used in poetry we've even had tie a yellow ribbon around the old oak tree when the brotherhood of man did that in the eurovision song contest uh, not to mention in the bible in uh, isaiah 61 you shall be called oaks of righteousness a planting by the lord this is sort of saying that oaks are strong they're able to withstand the winds and the gales but they stay strong Oaks, of course, are a great big hotel and they're home to lots of birds, lots of butterflies, uh, squirrels and all kinds of things. There's hundreds of different flora and fauna that make their home on an oak tree. We're going to be looking at plant identification. We're going to start off with the English oak and then the sessile oak and we're going to look at things like the cork oak, the home oak and lots of other oaks. So hopefully you'll be able to identify a few more oak trees. There's over 600 in the world, so there's lots to go at. So this is the English oak, Quercus roba. And one of the key things, if you've got the leaf on its own, is it has two little oracles that poke down. Uh, the sessile oak doesn't have those. So you can see here that the English oak has these stalks. Uh, so the acorns are born on little stalks. And when you look again at the sessile oak, sessile means stalkless. So you can see here that uh, the sessile oak, Quercus petrae, the acorns are born directly onto the stems. But it's interesting to note that the sessile oak does have stalks for the leaves, where the English oak doesn't. So that's a key difference between them. And notice here on the sessile oak, it doesn't have the oracles. So this is the copule, a little bit on the bottom of the acorn. Then you've got the nut, and then you've got the tiny bit, the remains of the style, which sometimes uh, is on uh, oaks like the pin oak. And if it's got a curved margin, that's known as crenate. If it's slightly sort of a triangle, that is known as dentate. And if it's like a serrated knife, sort of jagged, if you like, that's serrate. So those are some of the terms that are useful when you are identifying oaks. Uh, the other one that's really quite an important one is how incised the lobes are. So how deeply cut they are. That is quite a, a key thing when you are looking at leaf shapes. So what we've got here is a cork oak. This is a, a tree that you'll see a lot in Portugal and Spain. And they literally kind of rip the cork from it. Uh, obviously for cork for wine bottles and uh, it's an incredible tree and it's able to withstand that and come back and grow more cork and you can see it's a nice evergreen have a look at the acorns and you can see they've got lots of little tiny burrs on them now it's not as much as the burr oak quercus macrocarpa but it's got little tiny burrs and that's a good clue because on a lot of oaks the bottom of the copule uh, is clean uh, so watch out for that and you can see that the leaves are slightly spinous so a little bit like a holly if you like so here's an example of Quercus ilex the home oak and of course you got the word ilex just like our holly tree uh, let's go and have a closer look so here you can see it's got alternate leaves slightly spinose see the slightly prickly bits there and uh, you can see that the bud is in a bit of a cluster on the tip there. You might just see that, a little bit of a tip on. So uh, you can see the some of the features of an oak tree. It's quite light on the underside of the leaves. Uh, I can't see any acorns at the moment. So behind me, believe it or not, is one of the oak trees. So this is Quercus dentata. And so dentata it's got this slightly sort of, well, it's lobed. It's probably more crenate than dentate in a way, but uh, so it's not, if it was angular, 
Uh, so I'm surprised they haven't called it Quercus uh, crenator, but it's a lovely plant. So this is Quercus dentator. And look at the size of the leaves there, really nice tree. This is the beautiful uh, Quercus frenetto, and uh, it's got these lovely sort of wavy leaves, but it starts uh, quite narrow, then goes quite broad. And uh, so it's got these lovely low pieces that come in and a beautiful tree. You can see again, the buds are in clusters at the tip, which is typical of an oak. Beautiful Quercus rubra, lovely red oak. Look at those lovely large leaves. The red oak. And you can see that the leaves are slightly incised and they often go brown or they may get a reddish colour. Um, however, we're going to have a look at Quercus coccinian in a, bit, uh, in a little bit. And you can see that that one is really deeply incised. That's one of the differences between the two. And Quercus coccinia is slightly more spiny as well. This is the turkey oak and it is beautifully lobed all the way down it. Uh, but it has these lovely, soft, mossy bristles uh, just underneath the buds. And they're quite long, so you can often identify a turkey oak from that. Otherwise, it's fairly regularly lobed. Of the beautiful Quercus palustris. Palustris means the marsh, and this has got a fabulous pyramidal form. Really good. This is the English oak Quercus roba, of course, with its lovely sort of lobe leaves and one or two sort of the oracles going down. Notice the buds in clusters on the tip. Um, beautiful tree, and of course, we've got this beautiful, well known bark. So, this is uh, Quercus cuensis, named after. Q guns, it's one of the evergreen oak. There's quite a few. Quercus ilex is uh, probably the most well known one, the home oak. But this is Quercus cuensis, it's got slightly, slightly more cut on the leaf on the side. It's a lovely upright um, oak tree. This is Quercus roba fastigiata, and it could be a slightly purple form, purpurea. Um, so there's quite a few upright uh, oak trees that we have now. And uh, this is certainly quite a good form. Obviously, the one that we know quite well is Costeri, which is a very nice pyramidal form. So this is a really unusual oak. This is Quercus petrea, mespolifolia, so foliage like a medlar, Mespolis germanica. So Quercus petrea, mespolifolia. So if you've seen a medlar, you'll know it's got this quite broad foliage on it. This is another Quercus petrea, but this time it's in cicada. Uh, so it's got this sort of very sort of mottled sort of pattern to the leaf, almost like a, a viral kind of pattern. Um, and they're slightly distorted, slightly twisted. It's a really unusual um, variegation on it. So this is Quercus robra pedunculiflora. Now peduncle is the the stalk which carries the, the flower on it. So you'd have to see it flowering to, to, to see the size of that. But uh, it's quite a, a light colored oak. Um, again, a very compact oak. So uh, you can see here quite congested. So this is Quercus gariana. And you see it's got quite kind of smooth lobed uh, on the uh, lobes on the leaves. Uh, quite Quite broad as well. Quite interesting oak. Another evergreen oak. This is Quercus macro, large uh, lepis. So quite sort of large leafed on the oak. This has got an interesting name. This is Quercus trojona, uh, and it's the Macedonian oak. So Trojan is in the name Trojana. And again, it's a fabulous evergreen form, uh, serrated uh, edge to the leaf the lovely Quercus glabrescence and you can see there the acorn is sitting right on the stalk it's a sessile no stalk on this one right on the stem it's incredible how some oak trees even though they're hollow 
as long as there's a little bit on the outside that's alive, that's the flow of tissue which carries the sap, they can stay alive. So this tree is really hollow, a lot of the sort of strength on the outside, in the inside is gone, but yet yeah, it's still alive and can thrive and it's still pretty strong. Uh, so incredible how the trees can just hang on for a long, long time, even though they're hollow. So this is the major oak, one of the most famous trees in Nottingham. And uh, of course we remember Robin Hood and Maid Marian and uh, all the merry men hiding out in Sherwood Forest. And it's a, a fantastic tree. And of course there's lots of fantastic stories associated with oaks. Uh, this second tree is the Yeldum Oak, which goes all the way back to the Doomsday. Uh, the major oak, the reckon, is 800 years plus old as well. Uh, and there's some beautiful stories of other oaks. Lots of stories. We've got Charles II hid in an oak, in the Boscobel Oak, uh, to escape the parliamentarians. And there's a lovely story about a man called Ellsherd uh, in southern France who planted acorns. He came to a place, it was very bleak, it was very barren. Uh, and the villagers didn't have anything to mend their roots and he went around for 40 years planting acorns and it made this beautiful forest and the village then was able to build their roofs, mend their roofs and re-establish it and he planted about a hundred thousand acorns in his time and this is a great time to be planting trees and establishing lovely woodlands just like I hope that's helped a little bit with your identification of oak trees and that you're able to take part in planting trees for the future to make a lovely woodland just like here at Sherwood Forest. So the next time we're going to be looking at the beech tree and a lot of the history of the beech trees and all the different kinds of beech tree that they are. So we'll see you next time.